Hello, okay. Um, looks like my mic wasn't working right. Good morning, everyone. Let's get started. Um, so far, our concurrent viewers are a bit low. I didn't plan ahead because I had some food poisoning. Um, I had an idea of what I wanted to talk about today, but I didn't get a chance to make the thumbnail and put the link out there. But that's okay. I'm going to do this anyway. Uh, thank you for joining me. For those of you that did join me, let me know you're here. If you're new to the channel, say hello. Uh, I want to start off by thanking all of everyone that supported me in this endeavor. I'm glad to be helping you guys, and I really appreciate your feedback. For those of you that contributed with super stickers yesterday, thank you so much. It's going to make this more sustainable for me. Uh, I do really appreciate it. You know, even when it, if it were like ten cents, I would be like, yeah, ten cents. <laughs> you know, it's more like the uh, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. 
that I'm doing something meaningful or helpful to you guys is important to me. So today what we're going to do is we're going to look at some of my film photography as I critique it and kind of give you guys some insight into what I'm looking for. Now, um, I'm always concerned about technical issues and making sure that everything's working. So if you are in the live stream right now, if you could just say hello. And then uh, I will know everything's working. Um, what we're going to do today is we're going to look in Photoshop. And I'm going to kind of really break down an image. I'm going to talk about what went into photo capturing the image, what I was looking for, etc. Um, rules of composition are tools. They aren't these end-all, be-all rules to follow. What they are are helpful guidelines. They're these universal tr things that human beings tend to find pleasing. We tend to find geometric shapes pleasing. We tend to find like leading lines and direction, symmetry. All of those we tend to find pleasing. And so as a photographer, they are at our disposal and can be used for a variety of reasons. Uh, for example, you may choose perfect composition. You might want the perfect aesthetically pleasing image, but sometimes you don't want that pleasing composition. Sometimes you're going to want a composition that's a little bit looser, a little more raw. Uh, hey, Kenny. Um, so yeah, sometimes you don't want immaculate, perfect composition because then that type of composition can become quite stale. What we're looking for, so it depends on what you're shooting. If you're doing street photography, <laughs> hi everyone. Um, if you're just joining us, I got a little bit of a, I didn't get a chance to plan ahead and get the word out. And um, even though you guys know, I'm, I think a few of you have been tuning in every day. I am doing this at 10.15 a.m. every day. Um, sometimes I'm not able to set up the live stream in advance like this time. Um, I wasn't able to do so. Uh, unfortunately, because I wasn't feeling well, I think I ate something. Um, but if you guys are new to the channel and you do want to make sure, or if you, um, I w would recommend subscribing if you haven't already, because then you can, interesting, because then you can uh, be alerted of when these go live. Um, but in any case, you don't need the alert if you are going to just tune in every day at 1015. So what we're going to look at again few random a few different images um, so I lost my catalog recently and so I lost all the edits to my film photography not that I do much so there's all kinds of random stuff if we're looking at Lightroom some bad some good some interesting um, some I'm testing cameras out here's like for example I'm testing out a different film comp uh, a different film and chemical combination as well as a red filter that's Brixton and I running off into the distance <laughs> self timer um, but I already pick uh, opened up a few images in Photoshop that once we get a few people in I want to kind of really deconstruct I want to go through them I want to talk about what went into them what I'm looking for and talk about what I'm my personal opinions on composition Take them for what they're worth. Uh, but my personal opinion is that... there <laughs> don't want to show those photos. My personal opinion is that when it comes to composition, they're guidelines, they're tools at our disposal, they're things that, as human beings... So this is a camera that was starting to fail on me. Uh, images that human beings tend to find... Sorry. Things human beings tend to find universally pleasing, like geometric shapes, repeating patterns, that kind of thing. Um, those are all rules of composition. I think that... I'm multitasking. I think that composition is can be misunderstood in the sense that people think that the more immaculate your composition, the better. But sometimes... Sometimes a looser composition, a more raw composition fits the bill. It depends on what you're going for. So today we will be looking at that. I'm sorry if I've repeated myself if you've been here, but you know, people are trickling in. Um, 
Let's see what everyone has to say. Okay. So um, I want to quickly thank everyone on Patreon that has been supporting this channel. It has been growing. It grows slow, and that's okay. <laughs> you know, I'm I didn't do this channel to like make a million dollars. I didn't make this channel to get a million subscribers, or or I would make different kinds of content. Uh, if I had like ten people supporting me, I'd be happy to be honest. And right now I have seven. So I want to thank you guys. I'm gonna I want to read off your names. I'm pulling that up. Although you'd think it would be semi easy to pull that up, and I still don't know how to use it. I will get back to it. Um, I don't want to miss anyone. I think I missed someone. Linda, thank you, of course. AC, Jamil, uh, G, Quentin, AC, Joe, uh, all of you guys. I think I'm missing my newest uh, Patreon, but. I will get back to you today because I'm, I don't want to miss you. All right, let's take a look at the work. So when it comes to my street photography, that's a perfect case of a situation in which I'm not looking for perfect, immaculate composition. If you have perfect composition, your images can look clinical. They can look contrived. I want to get the, the kind of loose, chaotic environment of um, the Venice drum circle in this photograph. Uh, this one's not so chaotic, but... Uh, I try to keep my rules subtle. I don't go. I don't want it to, you to look at the image and say, "Okay, so here's rule of thirds. Here's that. Here's this. Here's this." And also, sometimes having a bunch of rules of composition it works. Sometimes it won't work. But in this case, I'm going for something very simple. And what I'm doing is I'm either I was uh, moving left to right in order to kind of get an even balance of the people distributed around my subject. So what I'm going to do in Photoshop, I'm going to create a blank layer. In Photoshop, you know it's a blank layer by looking at the bottom, uh, looking in the layer panel when you make a blank layer and it's checkered. Uh, some of you guys, a lot of you guys probably know that, but I am going to talk as if you're learning Photoshop for the first time and I'm going to vo verbalize everything I do. I'm going to try at least. So what I'm looking for, here's our main subject, right? This gentleman in the middle. But what I'm looking for is to kind of balance him out by staggering random elements or different people. So what we have is we have a man here, a woman here. We have, I'm using the bracket keys, by the way, to change my brush size. That is the hotkey. And the idea is that I'm staggering people, elements, so that my eye can go person to person and I feel balanced out. Now finding balance in an image is kind of, hey, you made it live. Uh, what time is it there, Bruce? Um, so balancing an image out is kind of a murky thing to talk about. When we're talking about balance in an image, <sighs> color can, can, we're talking about how your eye is pulled, right? We want to balance in the way in which our eye is pulled. So we want to balance between the left and the right. Now that doesn't mean if you have a trash can on the left, you have to have a trash can or even something similar sized to the right. What having balance means is that your eyes not being pulled too heavily in one direction or another. Things that can create a lot of draw your eye significantly could be like the color red. It could be simple size. It could be, um, could just be, uh, dark shadows. It can be anything, but anything that draws your eye will contribute to the overall balance. Um, so here, very simple, you know, you just kind of want to stagger elements around. I don't need to have fancy composition to capture a nice moment between this couple. So if we look, we have just elements here, here, you know, here, here, here. And the idea is that they're all contributing to balance out. And there's nothing wrong with putting your subject right in the middle, right? There's nothing wrong with that. I just want to be clear about it. I just made a mistake and I drew on my original. Okay. So one thing I'm always looking for is obvious leading lines, pyramid shapes, um, mirroring, okay? So it, when I look at an image, I, I definitely see a lot of the um, 
just the overall shapes, the lines that lead. It, now, sometimes leading lines and direction aren't going to be so literal. <laughs> it's early there, huh? Um, so, for example, our leading lines in this situation, so I'm going to make a blank layer by clicking by the trash bin at the bottom right, pull up my checkered blank layer. My lines follow these guys and then curve up and then down. And so one thing you can utilize are pyramid, pyramid shapes. His arms are creating a pyramid, and these people are all creating a pyramid. Uh, one thing I really liked is the way every, their gaze is headed toward me, and everything's moving toward me here. One thing I talk about quite a bit, because I really believe you should, there's more to direction of a photograph than just leading lines, right? We tend to follow the gaze of an individual. Even if we can't see the person's eyes, if you have someone's back turned to you and they're looking in a certain way, as humans, we know how to read that. And so it's kind of like when you see a, a crowd of people looking in one direction, you're going to look. It's similar in composition. Um, you're going to look in the direction people are looking. Let's talk about cropping. Um, as an option, I could have cropped and gone for a more traditional rule of thirds. Uh, I may have done that initially, but again, I lost my Lightroom catalog, and so I lost my film edits. But if you can see, if I do that, I'm losing his arms at the top, and I actually don't think it 100% needs it. I've talked about how I think if you're like in between, like rule of you're not quite at rule of thirds you might as well go all the way in and go with a rule of thirds well it depends it depends on if you have an overall balance and one thing i believe is that all the rules of composition the underpinning rule would be like balance rule of thirds creates balance you have one you have subject matter one third of the way that even if you don't have anything in the other two thirds it can be balanced out by that negative space so a lot of different rules of composition are actually contributing to balanced images um, this is from one of my favorite roles because out of like 36 frames i think 35 i felt were like great shots and that's uh re that's a really high hit rate for film it really is um I was just on fire, I was feeling the music, I was just, you know, hitting all these moments. So, here, what do we see? Um, we have some layering, so where does our direction go? So we can follow that in toward him. These, All these things are coming in toward our main subject, even this arm, this arm. Um, that arm so when we, we look at direction we're all we're looking at the totality of like where our, our eye is drawn again it doesn't have to be leading lines uh, arms can create leading lines etc so we can turn that off if you guys have any questions for me let me know if you're just joining me what we're doing today is we're taking a look at some of my film photography as I critique my own work and talk about what went into the shot like what I was looking for um, Again, I don't believe in immaculate perfect composition. In fact, I don't like it. Uh, it depend, But I wouldn't just have sloppy, loose composition for the sake of it. Whatever you choose, if you want a perfect, immaculate composition, that's fine if there's a reason behind it. But it isn't the end-all, be-all. And what I think happens is when we're learning something and when we see like the perfect, what we perceive as perfection, we want to emulate it. And that's okay for the learning experience to try to emulate someone's work um, so you can deconstruct it, figure it out. That's great. But at some point when you've, I don't want to like, I don't want to say mastered the craft. I don't want to imply I'm a master or anything like that. <clears throat> but once you've really figured out composition, you get it. Once you figure out the secret sauce to people's work that makes it so, quote, perfect, uh, it loses its luster, I believe. And ultimately, I think for most people's journey, if they continue it, that is, if they don't like stay, um, hit a standstill, most people will eventually realize that there's, there should be a choice between, behind your composition. And if you want perfect composition, it for, should be for a reason. Sometimes for certain genres, like street photography, 
it doesn't make sense. If you want to create like an environment that feels loose and chaotic and lively, having very immaculate composition can feel very contrived and it might not suit that type of work. For me, I'm usually looking for subtle things. Like here, there's not too much happening actually. I just saw a moment and there's an obstruction here. I shouldn't do that. I should make my blank layer. It's always a good habit. Um, there's an obstruction here. It's getting a little dark for the film I'm shooting at, I'm shooting with or shooting on. Um, but I saw a moment and so I didn't worry about the overall composition. But one trick I recommend if you want to analyze your own composition, especially when it comes to like balanced elements or what the weight of the image is, weight meaning where's your eye drawn, etc. Um, what you can do is defocus your eyes, let your eyes blur and look at an image and then see where it's drawn to. Now that's not perfect because like I was saying before, when it comes to balancing elements, many different things can draw your eye. It doesn't have to be symmetrical sized elements. Red could draw your eye significantly, whereas maybe a blue won't draw your eye so much, etc. Um, textures can draw your eye. So if you blur your eyes out, you might not be drawn by the texture. But it is a starting point for just seeing where your overall elements are. You just blur your eyes. So in this situation, um, one thing I'll do is I will at times wait for someone to notice me. And I shot these a few years ago. I don't remember. But I may have been waiting for him to notice me. I can't recall. Uh, but overall, we have lines that sweep that. That's not a good line. Hang on. Lines that sweep across that way. Um, if we look at this guy, it gazes in. We do have a play between these three main, uh, these elements. So, and what I mean by play is like your eye can dart between them. So wherever you start on an image, there's going to be natural direction to it. But everyone might start in a different place. Your eye might start here, probably did. But maybe for whatever reason, your eye started here and the eye will be drawn that way. Where's this guy looking? He's actually looking in this general direction and then you might be drawn that way. And then just because of the dark shade of his hair, we might then go there. That's a significant element. Uh, I did a poll on my community tab asking what kind of content you guys wanted to see. So let me know um, if you didn't get around to that please do your best to respond because then I can tailor this to you guys. So uh, what was leading seemed to be critiques, uh, but I haven't had anyone submit a new critique yet. So if you're like, uh, first, I want to open it up to people on Patreon. If you guys would like a critique, let me know. I'd be happy to critique your work for you. Um, but I will do that. And meanwhile, today I am critiquing my own work. When I'm shooting street photography, I'm much more, more than anything, I'm looking for the moments. And then the better you, the more familiar you are with your camera, the more you've learned composition and it's now a subconscious process, meaning you don't have to consciously think about your composition. You're just seeing it. Um, once you're at that point, <laughs> once you're at that point, um, I get thrown off when I have to read comments. Uh, once you're at that point, uh, it's easier to just get the moment because you don't have to stop and think about any camera settings or where, what composition, compositional tools you want. Again, I think the underpinning rule would be like balancing elements. I think that's behind most. So you can see in this image, completely flawed. And I want to talk about why I am okay with that. Uh, so when I was a film photographer, meaning when I was in college, I learned on film. First black and white, then color. Uh, I used to be really frustrated with imperfections. Dust was annoying. Uh, any, any imperfection. I didn't want a lot of grain. Uh, I couldn't afford a medium format or 4x5 camera, but I, would check, I used to check out a 4x5 camera. But I found 35 millimeter film kind of fell apart once you blew it up to like 16 by 20 which is what we were mostly shooting uh, printing for critiques 
and the reason for that is that it was the only, not only the primary means of making an image, it was the only way to make an, an image. It was on film. And when that was the only way to make an image, I wanted it to look perfect. You know, I wanted it to capture an image, uh, a scene well without imperfections. Now, fast forward, you know, I, I graduated college in 2005. So fast forward to now, I'm in a situation where film is like digital when it was new was like wow instant gratification awesome wow perfect you don't have to worry about dust awesome like oh you don't have to go into a dark room I, that i never liked actually i loved the dark room but eventually it's all the benefits of digital became disappointments to me like it was unfulfilling when you knew with predictability what your image would look like with film, even though I always have faith they will come out, maybe too much faith until like maybe I mess up and I, and I m lose an important job because I didn't get my exposure right, it will happen eventually. But it hasn't happened yet. But I love not knowing if the image will come out. I love not knowing with, with certainty what the image will look like, even though I have a general idea because I really trained my eye to see things the way my camera does or the way my film does. But there's still... A little bit of an element of uncertainty that you don't get with digital. When I photograph anything with my DSLR, I tend to find, like, I, I usually know what the image will look like. I mean, I don't really chimp my images. I'm like, I rarely do. I, you just, it's predictable. It is very predictable. Um, and with good practice, shooting film will also be predictable, but not quite as predictable. So in this situation, we have horrible amounts of uh, dust actually on the scan we have a watermark it looks like he here on the bottom uh, I'll highlight that like in case you guys can't see it it's right there um, but I'm okay with that I'm okay with that uh, shooting film for me is also a response to the world we're living in where it's like you have perfect everything everything's curated we're presenting a perfect version of our lives and our Instagram includes perfect models with perfect skin with perfect retouching with perfect composition and I don't want to contribute to that so my composition with film photography tends to be a lot more raw it doesn't mean it's not pleasing I, I'm still looking for aesthetically pleasing images I just don't want my composition to feel literal to on the nose I, then it will feel clinical that's what I'm avoiding with my film photography and that's why I'm totally okay with the dust and everything else now once in a while like an image like this I would probably remove the dust on like the subject matter but I probably wouldn't bother if it's random over here. Also, remember, I'm a lazy photographer, <laughs> and I don't like doing all that. Um, so I'd say here, our overall lines, if we highlight them, we have something like that. Yeah, we have some lines there. So eventually, if you look at enough photography, if you do enough photography, you're going to start seeing things in lines, shapes, etc. You're not just going to see subject matter only. Um, in this image, I just this guy, this clown. So originally, I think I probably cropped this image. Also, it's scanned weird. It doesn't look like it's a normal aspect ratio, but I would probably crop it in a little bit. I think that's more where I originally had it, something like that. Um, what I'm looking for in a, an image like this is to have a little bit of a like we have a play between the two in a couple of areas. One. We have the eye, the gaze there. We have the, the finger coming down there. We have her grabbing at his handkerchief here. Uh, I'm also using a bit of a framing device by having the bicycle here and the bench that go across. And it's just drawing the eye in toward my subject matter. It's kind of a bonus. I'm not going to claim I could see that, but we have some shadow here and some shadow here that does like a similar effect. And everything is drawing your eye in toward these two and the and what's going on between them. <coughs> I think we have a question. <laughs> All right. Um, <coughs> Castle is just flattering me, saying his neck is hurting from nodding in agreement all the time. 
I almost, I'm not going to lie, guys, I almost didn't make it to stream today. Um, but I do, I, I didn't want to do that. I, I, I'm committed, and the idea, like, I want you guys to count on this every morning at 10.15. I also really enjoy it, but I ate something last night that really messed me up. Um, so <laughs> I almost didn't make it. But I, I, if I didn't, if I made it today, it's probably very unlikely that I'm not going to make it going forward. Um, here's just like a really raw, low light shot. I had no flash. If you're curious about what I'm shooting on or with, I believe that I'm shooting Tri-X. <coughs> I'm shooting Tri-X with on my Canon One V. I talked a lot about my Canon One V yes in yesterday's stream. But that doesn't mean I'm always shooting with that camera. I, I don't. It's one of my favorites. I have, let's call them my all star team. I have my A team, you know, cameras I tend to use a lot. I tend, I've used the Canon 1V a lot. I've used my Rolly Flex a lot, probably more than anything. Um, I have a Rolly 35, which is a really cool camera. We can do an episode where I show you guys all my cameras if you're interested, but I'll need your feedback. Um, so I, there's a few cameras I use a lot, but when I do want a work, a tool, a reliable tool, meaning <coughs> I'm prioritizing the results a bit more than the experience, I might choose the Canon 1B, and that would be because of how consistent it is. I mean, it works just like my 5D. Uh, I wish it had like a controller for the focus point. It doesn't have that, but it's autofocus it was the best available and I think it's 2001 that camera came out but it's like the last great film DSLR or not DSLR last great film SLR it's a flagship camera um, it, it, you know people geek out and have brand loyalty and by saying that some people are gonna be like oh no what about Nikon what about this I'm like okay we could debate which one's better but Canon released the last like great flagship level SLR. I think Nikon released their last film flagship camera in like 96 or something. Uh, Canon released one last one a year before they released their first DSLR um, professional level. And I think they're going to do something very similar now. I, I, if I were to put my money on it, I would expect the 1DX Mark III not to be replaced, but to be supplemented with the Canon, like an R1, within probably a year. Anyway, um, there's not too much to say about this image. I just saw like an interesting, gritty, raw image, and I grabbed it. Um, I don't think I had a flash. I'm pretty sure I did not have a flash. I don't know how. I think... I don't know how I lit him. I think maybe there was like a strobe, and I, I waited for the right timing. I can't recall. Usually I can. <clears throat> so, one thing I really enjoy is making images that look posed that weren't posed. Like, this looks like an album cover to me or something. <coughs> Give me one second, guys. Sorry about that. I had to grab water. Um, so anytime I can make an image that looks like an album cover or p looks really posed, but it's not really posed, I enjoy that. The funny thing is, is people don't really, they assume it's just like your average posed shot, so they don't really get it. Um, if I pull up Lightroom, I'm going to see if I can find it. There's this one image I photographed of a guy. Uh, I think he was on heroin and he was so out of his mind that he was like l sleeping on, on a, a set of stairs, but it looked like he was like levitating on it. It's hard to explain. And he's like, he doesn't look homeless, really. Um, he's wearing a nice, nice leather jacket, if I'm remembering right. But the shot is just, it's like, there's no way that's real. And I think people assumed he was just posing. I want to show you guys that. 
Casa says, speaking of flash, I thought about getting a cheap one for my digital. Could I use that on my vintage cameras too? Oh, I don't know. It's possible if it's um, you can set it to manual. Um, might be a little bit outside of my knowledge, and I'd just be guessing. Um, I'd say probably not. Um, if you were local and you wanted a flash, I would honestly just give you one for like an old film camera. I probably have like I think I have a drawer of like old manual powered. They were basically like, you know, there's no TTL. It's just like manually triggered. And I would be happy to give you one, but I don't think you're local to me. I'm just looking up Lightroom stuff, trying to find the image I wanted to share with you guys. So you don't get bored, let's pull up another image, or let's go back to this real quick. Um, so here we have a pretty classic rule of thirds, and I have some threes. I have one, two, three. I love the way he's looking to the side, reminds me like of an old, again, like an old album cover. Um, this, we also have alternative crops. So we could crop, I'm not used to cropping in Photoshop. Let me, we could do some sort of a crop like that. See, it's not maintaining the aspect ratio, but we can do a crop like that as an option. Um, we can also crop as a square could work, either including some of the tree or even just doing a square of the guy here. Um, both could work. Sometimes there are alternative crops. You look for one composition after you shoot it. Um, after you shoot it, you see another. It's kind of hard to find photographs when I'm, you know, I'm going through like years of film photography that's been scanned in and I'm not entirely sure where what I'm looking for is. The cool thing about the Canon 1V is that you actually can use your modern flash with it. You can use like your any like Canon flash made is compatible with it still. Sometimes this is a cute dog. <laughs> I'm going to share this one with you guys. So my approach to street photography is not to, there's a few ways of doing street photography. Some people just are more interested in the streets and people are nothing more than like an element of design, you know. They're just using people staggered around in order to like create some visual interest. It's not so much about the moment, the emotion, or an interaction. For me, I prefer to like, when I'm doing street photography, I'm looking it's low res. I'm looking for things to capture real moments and then I just try to make them as pleasing as I choose. I don't always want it to look perfect. But some people again they're more interested in the streets, the architecture, and then people are just interchangeable elements of design. Um, an, an element they can add in to kind of stagger your eye around like I talked about. Um, if you're interested in that kind of work one thing you can do is you can find your composition and you just wait it out until someone enters a space. You could pre-focus on an area on the floor so that you're ready to go and then when someone walks into your area you want them in, you just hit the, the shutter. So that's not my approach. I'm not interested in that at all really. Um, here and there maybe I'll shoot a shot like that but it's not my thing. Like I need to feel like you can connect to a person in an image for it to work for me. Uh, I'd still love to do a um, a critique of anyone's work. You know, I'm gonna open it up to Patreon first. But if you guys would like a critique, please let me know. 
we can set something up. Um, when I'm not feeling as sick, I'll, I'll be able to prepare better. Um, here's a, an interesting shot to share with you guys. This is my buddy Smush. He passed away though <laughs> pretty recently. <laughs> um, so you guys can see again, I'm not looking I can't I, I'm not interested in like the perfect composition, you know? It depends. I'm usually looking for like images that I find aesthetically pleasing. I don't want my composition to be too literal or anything like that. I don't like clinical images. I'm not interested in photographing models with perfect skin, perfect composition, etc. You guys heard it. Let's um let's pull up. I'm going to switch to Lightroom in a second. We'll go through a few more images. And then if I see something, I will open it up in um I'll open it up What's in here? I'll open it up in Photoshop if there's something interesting. In the meanwhile, does anyone have any questions? So again, if you guys have, um, if you'd like a critique, let me know. Um, I'm still pulling up photos for you. Um, it seems like the critiques have been beneficial in my, when I ask you guys what you prefer in the comments or in my community tab. Um, that was a big one. People seem to want um, that. Uh, here's some interesting work I want to share with you guys that I really liked. Um, I'm going to switch over to Lightroom. Um, in these images, <laughs> I shot... I love this film, and it hasn't been made for like 20 years or something, but I had a box of it. Um, I'm blanking on it. It's like Fuji... It's not Riala. It, it might be, actually. Maybe someone that rings a bell for someone but it had just this great vintage look to it like very earthy too like I love the way it actually developed now I'm terrible at developing color <laughs> um, I, I, I might I'm not I enjoy the process very much but it's really hard to develop color on your own uh, I've made some upgrades so I can be more consistent with the results but the problem with developing color at home is that it's really hard to keep the temperature consistent but what I did is I uh, I bought something that's meant for actually cooking that will keep a t the temperature of your water consistent and so what you can do is you create like a bath where you you store your chemicals and you get the temperature to be perfect and it will maintain it it's not as good as like a lab would do. Um, I could probably do better with the Jobo, which is like an at-home kind of lab that automates a lot of the process. Uh, I'm not that interested in automating the process because I really enjoy the hands-on aspects. But um, So here I'm just hanging out at Venice Skate Park, uh, photographing people. Um, I don't know them, <laughs> but he caught me photographing them. Um, I think the I don't know what going on in this shot um, so yeah it's totally imperfect it's washed out but it just has a very vintage 70s vibe um, I was shooting with a broken camera too 
the it's a rangefinder and the coupling was off meaning like it was a little hard to focus so we have a lot of flaws a lot of it has to do with my developing it's expired film and it's a, com a, com a camera that's not really doing its job right Some random people. This guy, for whatever reason, had a wad of cash and he was pretending it was a cell phone. Um, here I actually paid to have, I wanted to try it. Um, I wanted to, I, I, I had a few things on the roll where I just didn't want to leave it to chance. And so like I decided to have it, I decided to pay to have it developed. Um, one thing I like to challenge myself, I like to always just challenge myself in general. So here's the mayor of Los Angeles shot with a Pentax 6-7. I shared it yesterday. It's a huge, bulky camera, and I'm like, I'm going to try to do, like, a professional event photo with it, and this is how it turned out. It was underexposed, and so you can, like, see the colors are a little weird, and it, it's not great, but it was more for the challenge than the result. Um, here's Jamie Lee Curtis at an event. So I, I, even after I got the results from the lab, and they did the scan, and I still had to tweak it. I, the colors weren't ever quite right to me. That's Mono Lake. Or Mono Lake, Mono Lake. What's this one? Oh. Um, again, this is a Bernie Sanders rally and like I was able to recover because it was underexposed but it wasn't like I didn't know what I was doing I knew I was gonna have underexposed images you know um, but again I lost my catalog so I lost the retouched versions but I was able to rescue it but they're not like perfect so we can actually in Lightroom bump it up a couple of stops and uh, it might still work hang on So maybe a stop and a third about here I actually ended up overexposing quite a bit and when you pull it down so if you've gone to my website you've probably seen this image but I did tweak it a little bit so it depends some stuff I like to more medium format because it is a really beautiful quality uh, and I think the look rivals my DSLR I'll edit those a little bit, but 35 millimeter, I'm usually just shooting to have fun, um, and I like the imperfections. So Casa says, totally California colors, looks like my 90s school day films Just I just scanned. Could be real, I guess. Uh, I think I have one roll I saved. I can check in the fridge later, but I'm not sure. I don't remember, but I think that's what it's called. Um, not those images in particular, but a lot of what I shot, I can pull those up. A lot of what I shot came out really earth, like earth-like, very earth-toned, um, which I really liked. Like the very good browns, for example. Let's let's find that. Let me think. Oh, I know where to look. These are, it's a shame I'm, I have to show you guys all the raw scans. I don't have the edits anymore. But 
me this was shot on my Pentax it's unsharpened and um, sharpening makes a big difference when you do a scan you can scan in cam uh, in the software or you can do it in Lightroom so one thing I noticed is you did have to play around with the colors to get it right but once you did some white balance adjustments you just got these beautiful tones let's try it well it's definitely unfortunate that I would have to re-edit these to show you guys how they turned out um, that's the other thing about color you can't I, I find I can't really just shoot it and more or less like count on it looking good with my black and white film photography I'm pretty much doing nothing um, I maybe tweak the exposure the tiniest amount maybe add a little bit of contrast but then I just sharpen them if there's a lot of dust and I can't get rid of it no matter how much I spray it with compressed air then I will possibly choose to um, to, to edit it out but only if it's on like the face that kind of thing if it's on random stuff I don't worry as much you guys can see like the scans of uh, all the imperfections Oop. all right so it's just a little bit of my own philosophy I don't want to repeat myself over and over um, so let's open it up. What do you guys think about composition? What are your thoughts? Is it challenging it? Is it challenging it? Ah, I can't even speak. Is it challenging for you? Um, do you guys agree with me? Are you always looking for perfect composition or do you guys like a much looser type of composition? Uh, what kind of, what's your favorite tool? Do you have a favorite tool? Uh, that might be a little weird, but it's possible you have a favorite photography tool. I liked the role I shot on this camera. Let's take a look. This is my Ansco Mark. I dropped it, not even hard, and then the rangefinder got uncoupled. Uh, this is like a really rare kind of, uh, it's not common, and because not a lot of people know about it, you know, n nobody really, it's not a prized possession, but it's really good. Like, I really, really liked the images that came out of it. Um, it was hard to use at this point because, you know, the rangefinder wasn't working right. You can see here. But when it, I did hit it, it, I really liked, like, the way the images looked. Um, even wide open, it, has a, it was sharp, and it has a, a lot of vintage character. Oops. So here's Brixton hanging out. I think I could activate my webcam. I'll show it to you guys. Ah, I think I have it stored in, in my bedroom, so we'll forget it. Um, So I'm going to keep this one short. I just, there's a delay, but I put it in the comments a minute ago. I mean, um, <laughs> for you guys. Um, if you have any last questions, let's go through them. Um, I'm going to cut it a little short only because I haven't been feeling well again. Um, if you guys are enjoying these, please like them. Um, you can count on them every day at 10, 15 a.m. for now. Um, also, it, for my Patreon supporters, I'm going to send you guys an invite. I have, what I did is when we canceled classes at Barnstall Art Center, I decided just for free, because uh, I really enjoyed helping my students, that I would just continue my classes online. I wasn't under, under an obligation to do so, but I really enjoyed the group and I wanted to continue with them. And so what I started doing is doing a weekly photography class online and what I want to do is I want to open that up to more people and just make it more of like a weekly photo group just to talk to hang out to have our we can share photos for critique you know one thing we've been doing is we've been 
sharing. I, I, I tell them every week I'm going to do it too. <laughs> I don't. Um, but uh, I, we're sharing, we're reflecting on COVID-19 through different photo essays, whether it's going around and photographing their neighborhood or photographing life in isolation. And everyone in the group has, I think, really been enjoying it. I can tell no one's in a rush to get off, you know, to like leave the, you know, end the call. Pretty much everyone's like in it, hanging out, even though there's like some people have families and and you hear their kids in the background and like they're like, no, I'm going to do my photo group. Um, And I think it is giving some people mental health, benefiting their mental health, including mine. Um, it's really nice to be able to connect with people about things like photography. I can talk about photography all day. So like on Tuesdays, pretty much I do this. And then later in the evening, I'm doing my photography group. So if you'd like an invite and you're one of my, I'm going to open it up to my Patreon subscribers first, supporters. Uh, I, I hate the idea of walling things off, but I'm actually only doing it that way so that I can manage the group. I don't want it to get too large. Um, out of nowhere, I want to see, I want to let it grow naturally. Um, and I want to see like what kind of retention we have. Like if people, once they go back to work, if a lot of people aren't able to make the group, you know, um, then it would be a good thing to have a larger group, that kind of thing. So if you're interested in being a part of my weekly photo critique group thing, uh, let me know, send me a message. Um, I keep, I'm very, uh, it's an open book with me. You guys can reach me at on my email. Um, you can reach me. You can. I always encourage you guys if you haven't yet. Um, it's really important to know who you're listening to. Um, no one can say. I don't pretend I can decide who is worth listening to. I don't pretend. I, I'm not the arbiter. I don't say. Okay, this YouTuber is legit. This YouTuber is not. In my opinion, some aren't. Some are. Um, I think it's important that everyone just kind of takes a look at who they're listening to and and gets their, what their background is, what their POV is, you know, what their perspective is. I guess I said three things that were almost the same in a row. Um, And uh, yeah, I think that will do it. Uh, Let me take a look at my notes if there was anything else I wanted to cover. Um, Ah, there were a few things I wanted to say. So today we took a break from event photography and I shared some of my work. But if you guys are one of my, if you're a fellow event photographer or you are learning photography, I have a few photography resources on my website that I think would help you. Um, Obviously, I, uh, so if you go to my website and you go to resources, we have hiring an event photographer. I wrote that for people hiring event photographers, but... I think by reading that, you would be able to say, okay, that's what like a well-informed coordinator or something or event planner is looking for. So I just put a link for that. <coughs> uh, the group time is 7 p.m. Tuesdays. So another resource for you guys so as i was saying knowing what a well-informed event planner might be looking for can help you show them that you are that person for the job um i have my event photography guide and i think that is probably the most thorough resource online um it covers a little bit of everything for the beginner (coughs) um and then i have one last link sorry to link bomb you guys um one thing i put together is if you go to my YouTube channel, you can see I, I have different playlists, but um, and that works well. I, I put all my event photography videos in one playlist, but also on my website, what I created is, and I'm linking that now, <clears throat> I created a link, uh, I, I created a page that basically has all of my favorite event photography videos, but then I write a little blurb about each of them so you can get an idea of what they are before you click on them. Um, I think that would be really helpful f- for someone that doesn't want to just run through all a whole playlist or doesn't want to click around and just wants to like see what each video is about. I really would recommend checking that out. Um, <coughs> if you guys want to see more of my photography, uh, more of my film photography. My Instagram is at retrograding. 
linking that. And if you are interested in my personal, like my professional photography, I should say, my Instagram is at Mick Millman. Uh, I really only started posting recently. I, I want to do a video, a live stream where I talk about marketing, where I'm just going to kind of answer questions and touch on all your different options. Um, but my I didn't build my business using social media. I was resistant for a long time. So that's why I don't have a big following when it comes to my professional one, because again, I just made it. Uh, Casa says, that's the middle of the night for me, but I, but I can't afford being a patron these days anyways. I'll just continue trolling. Yeah, man, don't worry about it. Um, if it, w I, I, like I said, I don't want like a paywall. It's just, I need to kind of, I want to introduce new members to the group slowly. I want to be able to manage that so it doesn't get like too big. Um, because also I'm limited as well because I'm not making money from any of this and it will cost me to have to upgrade my Zoom membership just to have more than like a certain amount of people. So I switched to Hangouts um, for tonight. I'm going to try that out and see. But even Hangouts I think also has a limit. So eventually I'm going to have to like pay for an order just to keep this group going even though the group is a group. It's not a, a business thing. It's, you know, um, I'll have to do that though eventually. All right. I think that will be it. Um... If you guys ever want to get in touch, I'm here. You have my email. You know my website. You know my Instagram. Uh, feel free to follow me and let me know who you are, and I'll follow back. You know, let me know where you found that your uh, you, your name on Instagram might not match your name on YouTube. So let me know. All right, guys, that's gonna be it for today. Um, I've got to get some rest. Thank you again. I.